Hey everybody, I hope everyone's having a great day. Today we're going to look at analytics, BricksForge, and form submissions from Bricks Builder. So when we submit a form from our website, what's one of the things that we should probably be doing when those forms are submitted? And one of the big things I do is uh, log events in my analytics software. So if a form is submitted, I want to know that. That's a conversion. If you're running an ad campaign or logging some sort of analytics for a client and you need to prove that the things that you've built are working, you want to log those events. And contact us forms are a really great use case to do that. So we're going to look at Fathom uh, and how we can log those events uh, through Bricks Builder using Bricks Forge uh, JavaScript events with the Bricks Forge panel. As a mouthful, but uh, we'll dive into all of it and see how it all works. First thing we're going to do is look at the Fathom events and a little bit about how to set that up. So we're in the Fathom dashboard here, and I have a few events already set up, and they give you a unique event ID, or you can create a new event and it'll add it to your list here. But what you want to do is create an event and then go grab the JavaScript snippet that they give you to fire that event. So when you click inside of one of your events, it'll give you the code, it'll give you the currency or the value that you want to track. So you could put, hey, this event's worth so many dollars or so many pounds or euros or whatever you want. Uh, but since I'm just counting how many forms are submitted, I'm just going to leave it set at none. And that will tell the, the event that it's only good for one uh, increment. So just bump up the counter by one. And then it'll give you your JavaScript code right here, which is really handy. So I'm going to copy that and store it on my notepad. And we're going to plug this in in the Bricks Builder here in just a second. OK, we're over on a website here with a Contact Us form. This is a Bricks Forge Pro form, but I believe this event will uh, fire when we use a regular form as well, but we're going to use it for the ProForm demo here since you probably have Bricks Forge and you have a ProForm. So how do we set it up? Uh, the first step is going to be to launch the Bricks Forge panel. And when you enable the Bricks Forge panel inside the Bricks Forge settings, you have this icon here. And this tool allows you to do all the uh, GSAP animations and events and I, I'm really interested in the events in this case because we want to run custom events when our contact form is submitted so that's the goal when form is submitted we want to do this code that we have from fathom so let's build that out we're gonna click here create your first instance and I'm gonna rename this to log fathom event and then over here is where the magic happens. Uh, you can choose your event to fire or trigger your action. So this is the section of the thing that you want to have happen. And this is the section for the thing you want it to do after this part runs. So if you scroll down, you'll see there are all kinds of different events here. Mouse events and touch events. But we're looking specifically at form events. Ah, this is so cool. Um, on submit form events. That's really powerful because it saves us all the coding. This is like a no code solution custom made for Bricks Builder. I mean, come on, that, that's so cool. So we've got our custom event on submit. Then the next thing you have to do is find your element on the page, or this says you can use a selector by finding it in the structure panel. So you can click here, or you can click here. I usually click here. And it's going to go bring the Bricks ID for that form. We can check it. Let's minimize that. So uh, that is our ID. And it will place it right there. Um, the other option, which I like a little bit better, is to use a CSS class or a selector here. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to click the class. 
I'm going to use advanced themer to copy the class to the clipboard. Awesome. Hit the dot and paste it. So I have this class and that's how it's going to know uh, which one. Now it says run exactly on this element. So when you're using a class and not an ID, there could be multiple. So you have to be careful when you're using a class that you set up your uh, where to use this section or setting here. But since this is the only form on the page, it doesn't matter in this case. But if you're worried about that, you can always use the ID, which should be unique, and uh, run it that way. So I'm just going to leave that setting alone. We can have it delay a little bit. So this is going to say, wait, Let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Wait for X seconds uh, to create the event listener. This may be helpful when waiting for other elements on the DOM. You know, that's just saying, hey, when I, I'm going to bind this event over to um, the form, like how long do you want it to wait before it does that action? Um, you know, 500 milliseconds. If you're having trouble getting it to run, um, you might play with that setting, but from my experience, you, you don't really even need to run a delay. It works no problem. Um, you can log it into the console and event if you want. And then you also have loading conditions. So if you had a specific page ID, you could say page 1000, page ID 1000. You do have to go get your page ID uh, to figure that out. So it would be really nice to have like a little button where you click it and it would tell you the page ID you're on sometimes because you, it's kind of difficult to get it with WordPress. You got to go edit the page with the WordPress editor and then the ID will be up here in the top, but uh, in your URL. But anyways, you can run it on specific pages. We're just going to select everywhere for this demo to show the uh, functionality here. And once you've got that set up, you're going to come over and say, add an action. And this is a really neat one. You can run all these different actions like add a class, remove a class, uh, set an attribute, um, run GSAP animation timelines. But what I'm going to do is run an advanced JavaScript action. Um, I copied my Fathom event script to my clipboard. Sorry, my text document here. So I'm just going to grab that code. And this is what we grabbed from Fathom. Uh, the, the snippet that it gives us to run when we want to log that event. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it right here. And since I've already got Fathom Analytics set up on my website uh, with the code in the header, um, it it knows that when I run this event, it wants to log it back with Fathom. So that's really all you have to do. So our, we're going to create a new instance here. We're going to submit, uh, choose an event on submit. So on form submit when the user clicks send uh, the form. We selected which form using a CSS class or you could use an ID. We set a delay. We said we want to log it in the console if you want to look at it. We probably won't look at it, but you can if you want. And we're going to load this everywhere on the website. Then the action that we want to run is a JavaScript function. That's at the very bottom under advanced. And we're just going to pop in our Fathom code right here. You can click open the code editor and it lets you edit things here. Edit the code. I think you could probably add comments. Yeah, nice. Very, very nice. This is really cool. Bricks Builder is the coolest builder uh, when you bring tools like uh, Bricks Forge, uh, Advanced Themer, all of those really cool tools just make the experience so good. So you can edit the code right there, save it, close it. You want to save your Bricks Forge panel here and then save the builder. So now when we go to the front end and we run this, we should be able to take a look at our uh, Fathom events in our dashboard and see if uh, they are logging properly.
So we're over here in Fathom, and I just wanted to look at the number of events. We've got three events so far, so when we run this form, we should see one more event, so that should come up to four, and then we'll be able to look and see uh, where the event ran. Okay, so I'm on the front end of the website here, and we're just gonna submit this form. and select all of these items here just like that and we're going to hit send and then we're going to bring up the fathom piece so click send it sent successfully i'm going to drag this window over here and let's see what we got let me hit refresh and there we go it logged our event right there uh, let's go do it again and see it happen again Run it again, so we should see five. Refresh, five events. Um, we can see different uh, analytics here, but I'm interested in the events. And if we go down, we can see our new test event. And it's completed four times. It says unique completions because Fathom knows that we're in the same session here on the website. So if you keep submitting it over and over and over again, it'll tell you uh, that really only one person has submitted it. So this is telling you how many users submitted it, and this is telling you how many times they submitted it. And then it'll calculate a conversion rate for you right there. So that's really good value that you can send to your client. Hey, here's the analytics for the week, for the month. And I think you can even send them a dashboard uh, from Fathom and let them see how their website's performing. Uh, let's go take a quick look at Fathom and see uh, just how it works and what their pricing looks like because it's not free like Google Analytics you have to pay for it but it's fairly affordable so on Fathom's pricing page it says it's up to 100,000 monthly page views for $14 a month and so what that means is you can have 50 sites and if 10 of your sites get 50 page views, like you're not even barely touching your budget here. So that's why I like Fathom because it's not per site, it's per page views. So if you have three websites and they're all getting 10,000 page views a month, I mean, if you're generating 10,000 page views for your local SEO client, that's pretty good. You're, you're doing good if you're doing that. And that's only 30,000. Um, so you could have, 10 clients at 10,000 views per client at $14 a month. So anyways, that's a, a Fathom pitch. I'll drop a link to it down in the comments if you're interested. That's what I use. The feedback I've gotten from my clients is very positive. They like it, so that's how I'm using. And that's how we brought uh, Bricks Builder, Bricks Forge, and the events together. This is the setting. Uh, page and how it works and uh, you know coming up with the problem to me is the hard part like how do we use these tools when do we want to use these tools and then coming up with examples so I was kicking around the BRICS forum like how do we track events when a form is submitted is there some sort of JavaScript hook that I can go grab uh, I was looking at their documentation on custom actions on the form. So there's this action here called custom. Uh, where is it? Right there. And you have to go write PHP to run a custom action. And I never could quite get it to work. So I just popped over to the Bricks Forge Facebook group. Very uh, informative group there. And asked the question. Said, hey, how do we do this? And then I just I couldn't believe that I forgot that Bricks Forge panel could do this. Uh, Danielle said, hey, <laughs> you forgot about events. He was, he was much more polite about it. He, he pushed me in the right way. He said, you can do this with events. And it just dawned on me like, yes, you can. I forgot about this feature because the timeline uh, in GSAP animation gets a lot of attention for the fancy things that it can do on the front end. But for the database guys like myself and the back end guys, you know, I'm, I'm a database 
guy I'd like to call myself. I'm interested in the analytics. It has a whole suite of tools for helping you write JavaScript to do stuff uh, just like this. So that's how I'm using it. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments and I'll be glad to see if I can assist. Anyways, if you don't have uh, Bricks Forge, it's uh, going back on LTD, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure I saw a post about it. It's uh, definitely in my technology stack and I use it all the time. It makes my life easier and it'll make your life easier too. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.